All right, now we're back. We're back with Destiny here. I mean, not Destiny. With Desro back. Where the hell you been, dude? I'm sorry. I, what the fuck? My uh, my electricity ran out, and I don't have a cell phone plan, so there was no way to contact you, and I was really sad. Your electricity oh, went out. Oh my god, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. like the whole neighborhood. I'm really sorry, buddy. It's all right. It's all right. So you're talking. We were talking about GTA Five. So GTA Online. What? Uh, five online went on today. Went went live today. Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah it went it went live that. at like uh, four or five a.m. And uh, apparently it looks pretty sweet, and people are super excited. But uh, Richard was saying that there was uh, server issues. Server issues. Richard. Yeah. 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 I I think I think the reason the numbers are as uh, as low as uh, what they are at the moment is because not everyone can connect. Like just looking at my fucking. Uh, Twitter feed as well. Everyone's crying about it. So, hmm. okay. Well, it's pretty so. typical to have uh, server issues on <laughs> the first day that something goes online, as we know from a lot of they other obviously games. Employ a guy like you to fucking run it all, Chris. That's why. Oh my like, God. did you just did you, did you guys just see the production? I mean, just now. So I don't uh -oh. not sure about that either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, real good. <laughs> oh man, like that. Okay, so anyways, we were getting. We were about to start the topic of Land of Broken Promises, and I was going to start with a question for you, Richard, which was, why'd you write the, why'd you write this follow-up article after the first one had already generated the discussion? That, I feel like a discussion that that's um, that was good, you know, that's good for people to to talk about in the community and have you know people question certain things, right? So why this yep. follow-up article? Uh, just because. I mean, like, you got to understand, this this wasn't planned. Like, all the other stuff was planned. You know, like, I, I knew what topics I was going to take on. I knew what I wanted to write about. I knew where the sort of broken promises were. And I wanted to sort of do something analytical about it. But immediately, after the first article went out, and the first article was pretty much just an emotive piece of editorial to introduce, um, you know, what the topics were going to be about. And that was, you know, like, the Pizza GG thing, Tears Still Outstanding... Um, you know, I mean, they hadn't even done like tier six yeah, yeah, at, yeah. That, at, at, that, at that point. Um, you know, there was like just uh, all all of this stuff. You know, the fucking Sons of uh, Starcraft documentary. Um, you know, all, everyone knows what it what it is, and um, you know, so I put it out there, and it was just to let everybody know this is coming, and I think the community is getting fucking fleeced, and you know, I've been in the community for ten years. I'm sick of seeing this shit over and over again. Like, really bored of it now. Um, I, I don't want it to happen again. And even if it burns all the fucking bridges in the world, I'm going to actually start writing about, you know, the, 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 the causes of these problems. So anyway, it was just almost like a fucking clear statement of intent is what the first yeah. article was. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was like, I mean, I was, you know, I, I guess maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but holy shit did people get fucking wound up about it. Like... They, uh, you know, Total Biscuit was straight on the... I mean, well, it was in control first. Well, come on. I mean, you, you knew that was going to happen, right? Yeah, but, like, I mean, come on. <laughs> this this guy, this guy, like, I mean, he, it's unreal. First of all, he got upset because I used a photo of him above a quote said by him. Uh, he called me tabloid shit. I mean, I, what, what do you want? You said it. If you don't want to get quotes attributed to you, don't say things. You know, it's real simple, you know. He shouldn't even be saying this shit anyway. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it needs to come from the horse's mouth, right? So, so, uh, why is it? So, for those it? of you that haven't read it, like, it's for those that haven't read the article, <laughs> what quote are you talking about, exactly? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't want to fucking, uh, read the whole thing, so it was actually quite a long quote, but it was basically into the whole, um, you know, we're, we're gonna do the promises, uh, for the pizza GG thing, but come on, guys, you got free pizza, wow, 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 you know. That bullshit, right? Like, as if free pizza is the be-all and end-all of, of the, what the Pizza GG thing was about. So anyway, so I, you know, I, I, I quoted it. He got upset at being mentioned in the article. Started talking about how, uh, the, you know, that was it. The community so toxic. The community so toxic. I mean, this guy's got a real fucking short memory because this is a guy who was kept on on a big salary as a mediocre player because of his fan base. The community is not that toxic. Like, I was getting death threats before he even had fucking Brood War installed. 
You know, it's like it, it, it's what oh comes God. Okay. with having a fucking opinion. You can't cry about it when you live in an elevated position because so many people like you. You can't cry about how nasty the community is and then benefit directly from how much of an easy ride they give you. It is fucking insane to be that hypocritical. But anyway, so so there was that, and you know, I'm on the blacklist. Like evil geniuses don't want uh, yeah, cooperate yeah. with me. We know that anyway. So that was fine. Then Total Biscuit weighed in. And that was interesting because Total Biscuits always said, I'm just a, you know, I, I, I'm not a real journalist. Um, I write for a, a small Counter-Strike website. Well, I've got we've had you guys go at it a little bit on the show before. Yeah, uh, so, you know, the, the guy doesn't like me for whatever reason. Like I mean, what, what, one time he denied even having met me before, and then I linked him to a YouTube video of me interviewing him. So, I mean, I obviously made a real good impression on him. <laughs> so, okay, anyway... Okay. So anyway, he, he, he went off on one about, you know, at once he'd stopped picking apart typos and, and semantics, he probably made some points that I respect his opinion. I think he's entitled to have his opinion. You know, I think he's uh, immensely successful at what he does for a reason. People obviously like it. Yeah, for um, those of you who don't know what he's talking about, TB made a like a 20-minute little audio clip or audio um, soundbite talking about just all of this pizza.gg stuff, mostly Richard's article and making comments... Um, you know, I mean, dissecting it, he made a lot of good points, like you said. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, the part I really disagree with mm -hmm. was when he basically did what everyone's doing at the moment, and that's turning it around on the community. And they've got the audacity t to say, if you bought the pizza, you've got a 50% pizza, you shouldn't be crying about us not actioning the promises or you're a moron. I mean, that's pretty much the... The argument in a nutshell. The only re I, I would contest that the only reason people bought the fucking pizza at 50% in the first place was to support esports. And in my article, I point that out, that the very first paragraph uh, of the press release for people is talking about how we needed to mobilize so we could be comparable to big things like TV. So actually, it was a rallying cry to help esports. That's pretty much what the whole campaign was predicated on. So anyway, once I got past that, I was like, okay, well, now we'll see what happens. So then live on three, um, you know, I've never bought into the whole thing about them being like, e.g. biased, but then they advertised a show that they were going to discuss the article, and then they didn't, and then it got brought up by J.P. McDaniel, who like called in and said, oh, hey guys, I hope it doesn't bother you, but I want to talk about Richard Lewis's article, and they just fudged it. Like, I mean, DJ Wheat hadn't even read it, but he felt comfortable talking about it, mm. which is absurd. Yeah. Like, to... to to, to, to admit you haven't read the article, but here's my opinion on the article. I mean, come the fuck on. Like, I mean, at least pretend you read it, yeah, right? Just, I mean, just jump in, guys. Like, jump um, in whenever. Like, hey, you don't have to hold back. Which, which all, out of all the people insults you the most? Like, if I had to guess, I'd say, like, Slasher, since, like, he's sort of a core worker. You know, he's a journalist, too. Doesn't that, no, like, man. really... No. no? Slasher, actually, his Slasher. responses in that were... were I mean, he yeah, had responses for what we were, I mean, he was talking about. It. He read it. Um, we did. We didn't read it. We was trying to avoid a lot of it. I mean, I did it definitely, but you know, uh, he didn't read it, so it's kind of hard for him to really give strong statements about it if he didn't read it, right? Yeah. yeah like, can I, um, that, Slash is uh, a really the, cool guy to me, but I wouldn't say he's a cool guy in general. But he's a cool guy to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the pizza stuff. It's like, it's not even like a debatable thing. It's it's pretty cut and dry. Um, the fifty percent off the pizza it was not a big deal. Um, that that stuff happens every single day. It's um, there there are different stores and there are different companies and there and the way that businesses market their stuff is a lot of people will have these like perpetual sales that go on such that the actual cost is never what it actually is marketed as. You know, um, if you've ever gone to a gas or not a gas station but like Jiffy Lube or something, you've ever gotten your oil changed. A lot of the times, the guys at the counter will say something like, "Hey, did you know that we're having a special right now? Like, I'll just go ahead and throw that in there or whatever." Because because the actual price that's listed is never the actual price that they intend to sell it for. They always run specials like that. So when you say something like, "Well, you got the fifty percent off," like it's like that was a really good deal. Like it's a little bit disingenuous to say that. And secondly, the the like Richard said like. And and it feels really dumb to even say this. Like obviously, a, a fuck ton of people bought pizza that weekend with the intention of, you know, as much as I hate to say it, supporting esports. Like that's why a lot of people bought that pizza. Was it a good deal? I mean, I guess it was a good deal using the coupon deals that they run twenty four seven, anyways. But that doesn't mean that you get to just like cut everything else out. Like like that that doesn't work anywhere else in, in any point of your life ever. Like in in any aspect ever. If your mom tells you to clean your room. And to clean the bathroom, and you just clean your room, and then you say, "I want to go out, mom." Like, did you clean the bathroom? Like, no, but I clean my room. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, are you retarded? Like, 
your mom would fucking slap your ass. Or in America, she'd probably just let you go out anyway because parents have no spines. But you know what I mean, right? Or like if you're in high yeah. school and you turn in at homework, you're like, you were supposed to do like a 14-page essay. Like you've had two months to work on this. And you're like, well, I did seven pages. Like that's cool, right? It's like fucking no, it's not cool. Like you're 14 pages. Like why would you only give me seven, you know? So to have a deal like this where it's like, well, you got the pizza, didn't you? Like why do you care about the tier promises? It's like, really? <laughs> I don't... It like this feels like a really silly discussion. I, I can't even believe that somebody would actually defend the position that the well, deals were okay. good, which they weren't, and that the tiers don't need to be delivered because they kind of do. Like, well, I don't know, like, again, this is just in a way, it's it's them not wanting to you know just completely apologize for it, right? And, and I mean, they they have said apologize to an extent, but them giving those reasons is is exactly that, in my opinion, that they just don't want to own completely up to them making, like, big mistakes there. The thing about yeah, the pizza... No, the, wait, hold no on, that's... Anything, Chris. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have said anything. This is the point. It's, like, so irritating. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I, you know, I, this question comes up all the fucking time. Like, what, are you genuine or do you, like, just want to stir shit? Right, let's look at it from my point of view, right? I do not have a massive following. If uh, I ever lost my job with Heaven Media, I'd be pretty fucked in terms of working in esports because I wouldn't have a following to monetize. I couldn't go and get a job somewhere else and say, I got 70,000 fans. You know, I, I got a fucking very small fan base. So do I want to be the guy who has to butt heads against people with 300,000 followers who can just tweet, I'm a douchebag, and everyone's gonna be everyone on their Twitter is going to believe it, and I have to tell my 2,000 followers, like, hey, guys, remember? Remember that time I wasn't a douchebag? Like, I, I, who wants who wants to get into that fucking war of words? They've all got bigger megaphones than me. So no, I don't yeah, like it. I don't want to burn bridges, you know. Like, and I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Believe it or not, I actually care about that as well. But unfortunately, if you're on the fucking wrong side of the argument, you're on the wrong side of the argument. And that's just yeah. unfortunately how the chips are gonna fall sometimes. So you know, I get asked all the time, like, do I enjoy doing this? No, like, like it, it, it is a real. It really. Is horrible to have to deal with it, you know, like every day abuse, you know, fucking, you know, well, Jeff thinks he gets it's... death threats, holy shit, like, I should show him some of the ones I get, like, cancer daily, like, seriously, like, if I ever come down with it, like, there's gonna be a ticker tape fucking parade, like, outside the EG yeah. house, probably, <laughs> so. And I don't know why you read it, but getting back to the pizza thing, and it's, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, we're just talking about pizza, I mean, the, the, the whole point of this, guys, is that, um, is it actually lying to us? No, they're not lying to us. I mean, they'll probably they probably will do these things like months later, which is what's happening. We, you know, the the EGTL thing was it pretty looks fun. really bad. It it's looks really bad that that EGTL thing was able to be put together and produced and come out in like two days after the community uproar. You that's know fine. What I mean? Okay, I mean that. Yes, that's totally that's... right. But the fact they did it, you know, at least they did it. Okay. And we're going to go yeah, and but nitpick it, it like, again. That's, a, that's I mean, like it's... a... No, no, no. It's not going back to nitpick it again. That's just like a credibility thing. That would be like you catch somebody who, like, you're married and your husband fuck, is like fucking like his 27th prostitute. And then you catch him and he's like, I'm really, really, really sorry. Like, I didn't mean to fuck 27 prostitutes. Like, oh I mean, it's easy God. to say that now, but like, fuck, like, where were you like 26 <laughs> chicks ago? You know? Like that, so like to say like, well, we're not gonna nitpick it. Now. Like, I mean, yeah, like we're not. We shouldn't nitpick it. I don't want to nitpick it up. And it was a fun event. A lot of people liked it. But the fact that it was able to be produced and like everything went on so quickly after the community uproar, it kind of in the back of your head, you're kind of wondering, why couldn't this have happened? You know, like 42 months earlier. You know. Yeah, and the, you know, in the end, um, Tree Hugger at Team yeah. Liquid. Somebody in chat said Tree Hugger yeah. at Team Liquid said it. It was on TL. It was planned weeks prior to the article, and it was all a coincidence. Did he ever announce that it was planned earlier? Yeah. Because if there okay, are no so announcements, that's kind of, if there's anything like that, like how are we supposed to know? I mean, here, here's the thing about Pizza.gg. Like when it when it happened, when it first happened, and the campaign happened, I thought it was a, a really great idea. I think mm -hmm. marketing wise, I think it was really spot on. You know, w w whether you liked Papa John's or not, I think doing that, doing the tiered system, was really cool. The issue right now is, is that they obviously didn't plan in advance when to do all the rewards. They didn't even anticipate it happening in a way. I mean, they just kind of came up with these fun ideas, and then they just didn't even think about the preparation of it because a lot, of, some of the the tiers involved the League of Legends team. The League of Legends team was going to be be booked for LCS Doing for months. Music video. Right? Yeah, I no, mean, that was gonna that was not going to happen. So that's like that's the, the thing to learn from all this is that like if you're going to so, do a campaign that's cool like that you have to have all those things scheduled out soon after, not it's like, also like six months and after. Th there's the saying that you should never attribute 
stupidity or incompetence or whatever, and I agree with that. And obviously there is a little bit of incompetence, which might be harsh to say here. But, and like, and this isn't to sound like an asshole or whatever, because I love all the people involved, um, except for Alex Garvey, who's sick my dick. But I love all, everybody else, like all the players and everything. So like, I don't have anything personally against anything. But, but like, this is what it feels like from my perspective, like looking at how things are ran and how the businesses work and everything. This is what it felt like, okay? It felt like we have a really amazing idea across several teams to get exposure from Papa John's we're going to do this event, we're going to go for the tiers because that's the kind of exposure that Papa John's wants in this community, and once we do that and they see the great exposure, we're going to, we're going to net ourselves a sick deal with Papa John's. We're going to get a sponsorship or some kind of an endorsement deal, and that'll be awesome. And then we don't care about paying out the tiers and, or, or doing the tiers and all the, or whatever because that deal with Papa John's is going to be awesome. It's going to make it worth it. And it kind of looks like they did it, and that deal with Papa John's didn't really materialize. So now they're like, oh, fuck all. Like, <laughs> we didn't get it, so sucks for you guys. Like uh, and that kind I don't, of thing, I don't know if like, it's so much that I don't know if it's so much it, that I mean, or it's, it's just they didn't maybe it but I mean like that that kind of an event that kind of an event is something that you do to net a sponsor to show because because everything is there the formula is there I know, like, that's we can not, sell that's your not products, questioning we can though. give you big exposure and we can hit landmarks like th- those yeah. three really big key things were were demonstrated during that thing and it and, and it looks like what you're trying to do is an entice sponsor ship from a big company like Papa John's into some kind of a more permanent deal, uh, a yearly or, or whatever, some kind of big, some kind, land some kind of deal with that company. And when that deal doesn't materialize, then they're like, well, I mean, we didn't get it. Like, we don't care as much about the tears anymore. Like, yeah, but all, we didn't, you know? so, like, so we didn't buy pizza to get EG a sponsorship, all right? We bought pizza yeah, to, to, to make those tiers and to support esports in general, right? Maybe getting Papa John's sure. to come yeah, into yeah, yeah. esports in, in general. Yeah. So, the fact they didn't get the sponsorship, I think it has nothing to do with whether they executed on these rewards or well, not. Like, and oh, yeah, no, no, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I'm just saying that as somebody yeah. looking in, it just yeah. felt like that we kind of all went for a ride. Like us, the people. Like we donate to this thing with the expectation of seeing tears, but once they didn't get the sponsorship deal that they wanted out of it, it was like, fuck all. It was almost like they should have put that as a requirement to be a little bit more honest about it. Like, we plan to land the sponsorship deal, and if we don't, well, fuck your tears. Like, we're not going to do anything. Because that's kind of what it well, felt it like at the happened. end. They should, they should just not have made these, cra- you know, just well, easier yeah, things you're to saying, do. Easier you're saying, Chris, to do. Like, easier things to do. Chris, it couldn't fucking be easier. Did you see no, that? but the League of Legends team, the League of Legends team stuff, dude. Right. They should not have done anything with the League of Legends team. Right, right. right. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. Okay. But did you see the in control yes, and yes, TO swap it. thing, right? Yeah, I so saw you it. write you write some shitty little April's Fool post, right? Which is like you know just simply hilarious. And you have in control change his Twitter name and TLO change their Twitter name, and they tweet some very you know gener- generic humorous jokes about how EG are obsessed with money and TL are scrubs or whatever it was, right? It's funny. And, come on, and, I mean, geez, right? Yeah. And, and, and you do that, right? And, and you're telling me that we wait five months to get that. What is so difficult about that? What was so well prepared and well executed about that that the community should have had to wait five months to fucking get that little ray of light, right, or whatever the fuck you want to call it? It's, it's yeah. absurd to even sit there and try and justify that, that that executing that took five months. It could have been done the next day. It could have been done the moment you hit the... The tier. There was absolutely nothing preventing them doing it whatsoever, except mm-hmm. laziness and almost a, an, an absolute, um, you know, arrogance that, like, you know, well, we can we can just do it in our own time, and that's 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 why you know I feel compelled to write this stuff in the first place because that's not the way we should be treating people who make a financial contribution. As I, it's like I said in the first piece, what really annoys me about it is all of these guys now. Like, I imagine most of the guys in the Twitch chat, most of the guys on Reddit. Right, whether they like me or flame me or, or, or whatever, right? They w- generally work a nine or five or they're a student. Yeah. Okay? And they put money into esports so people like that can avoid, you know, <clears throat> and I guess people like me because, you know, I, I'm in that circle, but I, I don't get donations or anything. But, you know, they, they, they don't have to go out and work that soul crushing nine to five. They get to work I- I- in esports thanks to these guys. And then to treat them with that level of content, that actually does fucking annoy me. Um, I just, I... yeah, Desro, got any, got any comments? Yeah, well, I mean, we gotta give them like some sort of benefit of the doubt. Like, uh, if we like, I know so you people don't like Alex Garfield, but like, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty convincing. I mean, he's done a lot for EG. What if, uh, they were just trying to nail the sponsorship like all along, and like Papa John's was just being like lazy or slow at responding 
to like confirm her sponsorship or maybe EG was waiting for like some sort of numbers from like uh, their LOL team and LCS or something. Like if you do the event right after and you're not sponsored, you're missing out on an opportunity. Plus you have to buy the fucking pizzas because Papa John's like, we're done here. You have to buy the pizzas. I'm, I'm out of here. So, so maybe, just the, maybe, they were waiting for the sponsorship. This, this is something that in the big boy world that you have to, you have to have all of this planned out beforehand. If you're yeah, promising well, events yeah. that you absolutely cannot deliver on without a sponsorship, yeah. then that sponsorship needs to be partially penned before you ever even like announce the events. You know, like if if, you, if you're promising things in the tiers that you're gonna do that is contingent upon a Papa John sponsorship, then you have to have something in writing for them saying if we hit these tiers, we expect at least X or Y or Z financial backing. You let's, know, upon reaching said tiers. Let's be you, honest you don't here. Just, those, those things that they promised had nothing to do with signing a sponsorship or not. I mean, they, no, yeah. but it looks better if you're sponsored because, like, w when they did the show match, they they like didn't jerk off about Papa John's the whole time. They were like, "Yeah, we're doing a show match. This is cool because of Papa John's." Instead, they could have been like, "So this show match is brought to you by Papa John's. Thank you, Papa John's, for sponsoring us." And then you have fucking sure. in control taking a bite in between every match. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> the, uh, what, what was interesting is when they when they did execute the uh, the actual show match when it did happen, and it was interesting because on the twenty fourth of uh, uh, May. They said it would be one week away, and, and, and it happened on the 29th of uh, September. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. On, on that uh, show match, they didn't mention Papa John's in any of the sponsors. It felt completely disconnected from the original event. Yeah, you know, they, didn't, they, they didn't mention it at well, all. Yep, you're right. So, so it, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? What the fuck was all that about? And um, obviously, we'll, we'll move on talking about the Pizza GG thing shortly but you know i i i've worked in in sales and uh, my company have a media we we do campaigns like this i know what those codes are for those codes are not some magic number that get you a discount those codes are there so we can track who's buying right and oh yeah it's like affiliate yeah. marketing yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly then that's all it is and that's all it was and you know the whole point of it was let's get as many people as possible so we can impress Papa John's and maybe just maybe they are going to come back and give us something a bit further down the line that's what the whole exercise was about it wasn't about the fucking community it wasn't even about a direct return like everyone at EG denied that they made any money from it whatsoever which seems to me absurd but uh, but there you go so you know I just I just feel like it, it it's it was just a fiasco from start to finish like they just pumped everyone's head full of bullshit so they could get as many people to input that code as possible um you know i mean but even they, to the point of telling people to you know in eat an unhealthy amount of pizzas it was just yeah, like but that's it was, not re the point. It was that's really not the sickening point, Richard, okay like marketing is marketing for stuff like that i don't i don't care they told me to eat a bunch of pizza i just care that they you know what the incentive that they give me is just met yeah. I don't even care yeah. if they get the sponsorship or not. You know, when it comes to the consumer is like, if you tell me you're going to do this, then, you know, I'm expecting it to happen. And I'm not expecting it to happen a year later. I'm having a, I'm expecting it to but happen like, soon like after. The tiers, the tiers are the incentive, right? The direct incentive, the stuff we're expecting to get anyway. But what they pumped endlessly was almost like this meta incentive. I know everyone loves the word meta in, in esports. Uh, you know, uh, the, the meta incentive, which was Papa John's and other big sponsors will be coming into esports as a direct result of this. You know, they, they said it about that eBay campaign that they did as well, which I heard nothing of. I mean, they're, after, they after, never after said the, they will. They're, you know, just the hope for it. Yes, the hope for it. And there's nothing yeah, wrong well, with that. There's nothing wrong with the community try i know you what guys hate this shit. i know you and steven hate this shit but there's nothing wait wrong hey wait whoa 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 hey, well, what? just just the whole like supporting esports stuff you know no, just i don't mind supporting esports that's fine but it just can't feel like a big cheap fucking money grab like jeez <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with supporting esports but there's like there's no good late companies that seem like they jesus christ like i i, I feel like you have these people who are like so fucking invested in their own organizations and that's all they ever give a fuck about and then when you kind of like take the community for a ride when you mount them up and fucking ride their dicks for so long trying to nail sponsorship deals and you can't even deliver on the incentives that you promised for like it just feels a little bit sleazy you know yeah yeah i mean the, the thing is is that you know tv's thing too really like the they're <laughs> TV's thing, I love TV to death too. And but the the one thing that he said that really just kind of got me was, um, you know, calling us all morons for <laughs> for basically, you know, uh, buying into the whole supporting, you know, kind of yep. doing this to support esports. 
I mean, that's just... <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, that's I mean, so what, wrong, because that, that's what, why this community exists. You know, this community exists because like, we care. You know, we, we have this this common common interest, and we, you know, we have the same belief in certain things. And that's It's a little bit strange. Oh, God. I love Total Biscuit to death, okay? I love Total Biscuit. He's a good guy. He's built all of his shit. I, I respect him, et cetera, et cetera. However, for somebody like Total Biscuit, who is sponsoring a team that is a revenue negative fucking asset that has never made money for Total Biscuit, it's almost literally like a charity that he's running for marketing. For him to say you're an idiot for supporting esports when he's probably put more money into supporting esports than any other individual is a little bit strange. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it just got back to the whole, you know, you got pizza for it, you got something for it, you know, and, and it led back to that, but... Yeah, yeah, but that's not, that's not legitimate. Can we just spell that one more time, please? If you go to um, retailmenot.com, you can look up coupon codes that pizza places run <laughs> all the fucking time. Yeah, it's true. It's, how, it's, it's how it works. Um, can, can, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me explain this real fast, okay, because this is important. You have to understand this, okay? Um, you, you own a restaurant, okay? And you have a product that you can sell at a good profit margin for, say, like, 12 bucks, right? Like, that's what you've decided, like, we, we can sell this and it'll, all of our overhead will be paid and we'll make a decent, you know, pretty penny or whatever. And then we good, okay, $12. So what you do is you take that $12 product and you always market it at 16 to $18, right, or $15 or whatever. And then you constantly ship out coupon deals to sell that product for $12. So what happens is you get people coming in, buying your product at the price that you wanted to sell it at originally, thinking that they're saving money because of the coupons that you're sending out. That's how those pizza deals work. That's how the 50% off works. That's how every, go, to, go look up retailmenot.com. You can go and find 50 million pizza coupons right now. There are tons of different places that have marketing schemes that work just like that. If you, if you live in a house or you go ask your parents, every single week in the mail they get a ton of coupons from Burger King or uh, McDonald's or Pizza Hut or Papa John's or yep. all these places because that's how their marketing schemes work. So the idea that you got something great by cashing out on a coupon that they offer all the time anyway that's not true, you know? Like, Alright, well let's move on from the Pizza.gg thing because honestly the Pizza.gg thing was not it, it was you know, nearly a big issue. Article anyway. yeah, like, it's, I mean yeah. uh, what, what, what actually spurred me to write the article, like what pushed me over the fucking edge uh, was like when I went and asked Artosis, like again, just I, I, I don't get what goes through people's minds. Like, so Artosis is a nice guy, right? I mean, let's let's put that out there. He's he's a nice guy, and um, whatever his track record of keeping his own promises is, which let's be fucking honest, it's not great. Um, he still remains a, a nice guy, a beloved caster, blah blah blah, right? So I asked him uh, about this uh, Sons of Starcraft documentary. You know, when was the last time the guy filmed you? But I was really upfront about it. I said to him, I'm writing an article about. Uh, you know, broken promises, and a Sons of Starcraft articles co come up, uh, documentaries come up, um, and I might be doing an article on it. So I just wanted to ask you some questions. So rather than just, I know, like, answer the questions or say I don't want to answer your questions, he got really defensive, like, started, like, lecturing me about how long a documentary takes and how he'd just been filmed the other day and there was more filming to come, and then, like, accused me of stirring up retarded witch hunts and then said I don't want to talk about it anymore and just ignored what I was saying. Now, the reason I think the Sons of Starcraft one is important is because if you were an outsider, if you were an outsider, like someone who didn't know anything about esports, and you saw that a lifelong friend of someone, Tasteless, had raised $42,000, over $42,000 through a Kickstarter to make a documentary about his lifelong friend, which also would fund him living in Korea as part of that, um, you might think there was a bit of strange nepotism going on, and you would especially be a little bit suspicious when there was no fucking updates about it. Now, I work in esports, so I obviously know there's no way anything bad like that could ever happen in esports. There's no way anyone would lie to someone and take their money. That's When's that ever happened, right? So I'm asking the question because I want to tell the story. I don't care if Artosis blows a load of PR smoke up my ass, right? Like, if he does that, cool. I mean, that, that those would be the facts I would have to go on. But instead, he yeah. got really fucking defensive. But I didn't realize how defensive he got about it. So he goes to the guy, Tumba, or whatever his fucking name is, who runs that esports management group, uh, who just, you know, who just so happens to, um, you know, uh, be, ha have artosis and tasteless and the filmmaker of Sons of Starcraft as clients, right? So, you know, nepotism 101, okay? 
So this guy then tweets me, and I'm moving house, so I didn't even see it until the next day, at like 8 in the fucking morning or something, saying I'm single-handedly killing esports and journalism. I mean, what is wrong with these people? That was when I thought, you know what, let's put all this shit out there because it's the same people bandying together to protect each other's shit whenever anyone calls them out about it. And I'm just bored of it. Like, I don't care if these guys never talk to me again or never give me an interview or they, you know, stop me producing content. There'll always be something to write about. They can't shut out journalists forever. And I just really wrote this article just to highlight how hard it is to, like, A, try and do any fucking real journalism and get any real answers to the point where you can't even ask valid questions um and 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 be just like the lengths they'll go to to try and discredit you when you do all right steven got any comments <laughs> i don't know man that's pretty fucked up that's pretty that's I pretty impressive funny. i thought it was funny going. that the manager of a of a management group like would go and do horrible pr online mm -hmm. like that like that's that would be pretty funny I mean, like, it's a little bit ironic because it's usually you go to a management group so that you yourself can avoid doing what he was doing on Twitter. It's a little bit. I think that's ironic, right? <laughs> I don't know. The, um, the whole net, the whole, um, using the term nepotism to describe esports is, I mean, like, that's been pretty much de facto since day one. But, yeah. but I mean, like, this is kind of an extreme, like, almost to the point of silliness. Like, to have an esports management group with tasteless artosis and the guy doing the documentary under them and then doing a kickstarter to raise money for tasteless's lifelong friend or whatever i don't know man like whatever so i mean if artosis would have said like oh go ahead, keep going. The, the, the 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 problem that all of these this is what all of these companies needed to do like a long time ago fucking including like mlg jesus christ mlg could have helped so much they needed to they just need to have like a pr man like a pr frontman to, to like communicate with the community like people are I think people are a lot more forgiving of Star Nation and a couple of the other documentaries out yeah. there because at least they're updating a lot even if Adjusted. you think it's been a long fucking time and it has been a long time since they got their money at least they're putting out a fuckload of updates you know um, but these guys I think put out three updates over the lifetime of the Kickstarter did I read that and then like a few yeah. scattered updates on like Twitter and shit so for Oh, I love Dan. For for Artosis to put out like that kind of a snide remark after he just literally opened a website to charge people a monthly subscription fee to deliver a bunch of content that he has historically failed to do since like the beginning of time. And how many like that's like a running joke, right? That Artosis starts shows. What what about the Imbus show? What about the there's fit like all sorts of things like that. For him to start a website like that to cl and collect monthly subscription fees, like holy shit! I don't know, man. That's like. Well, if Dan would have just said no comment to you, Richard, you're still gonna have a negative feel for that. To that, too, no, no, right? no. I, 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 so. you, well, you've even if he did, no, rightfully so. I think you've got to respect no comment. You know, like uh, you know, I'm a serious journalist. If people want no comment, you write that they you ask them and they had no comment. Most people will do anything to avoid that. I don't necessarily see that as a negative thing. Usually, especially in esports, when everyone's dumb as fuck. It's the smart play, right? Like, because people open their mouths and it gets them in trouble because they go off half cocked. Which, again, look at the Pizza GG fiasco. In Control thinks he's helping. He's actually causing more problems because he shouldn't be saying the shit he's saying. You know, he's personally invested in it and he makes fucking mistakes. So I, I think a lot of the time, no comments are fucking smart play. And I definitely would have respected it, especially from Dan. You know, like, this, I think, this, this, is, so, I, this is someone I, I respect, no you know? No comment is a smart play when when the answers are things that you could never sell to the public. I don't think that no comment is an is an appropriate response to like the status on a documentary. Like they should be able to give some kind of update or some kind of timeline or even if there's no timeline, at least at least explain that. Just anything, just anything. Like there just has to be something for the people to understand. You know, like that was MLG's big problem with their dropping strike and everything. Like everything that MLG did could have went over 50 million heads out if they would have just had somebody besides Sundance just doing PR, like just tweeting or communicating <laughs> with the community or like anything yeah. besides nothing. Like nothing is the absolute worst that you could do, you know? Yeah. Desro, you want to say anything? Um, well, MLG learned a lot from Sundance being an idiot. Uh, they have Adam now for the Dota 2 subreddit. And like any time they have like a small update, they're inviting a new team, they're thinking about how to do their uh, Dota TV ticket and their packaging, they always go and ask for feedback and they're always super open in the subreddit. 
So it's a it's a very like big change compared to a Sundance tweeting like hyperbolic tweets about big plans, just like naming states or countries and like not saying anything else. So uh, it's just yeah, PR is like a really big thing, and uh, yeah, the no comment is fine. I mean, it's just like it's not rocket science to take like maybe 10 minutes of your one hour and a half movie and just make a teaser or two. Uh, they only did it when they needed money. And after that, they were like, well, we need some time to edit and we're not going to do anything. It's like nonsense. People, like, I know when you kickstart something, you, you shouldn't expect, like, a product or uh, there's, like, some sort of limit of what you can expect or demand because it's just like a donation. It's not, you're not like an investor. But uh, you got to please the people, otherwise the people are going to flip tables. And that's what's happening. And it's really silly, too, for, uh, for Tumba and everything to go like, Oh, Richard, what, what are you doing? Why are you rustling some jimmies? It's just really stupid. They should just accept it. Like, you, like first of all, I think uh, if you're going to like ask money to do a documentary and you don't have like a resume of making documentaries, it's obvious that you're going to suck at editing and it's going to take you so much longer than like a professional team of documentary people. So you should be really upfront about how long it's going to take you. And, or at least have excuses ready or like have a long-term plan of like trying to uh, buy time so that people don't get upset. So yeah, that, that's my opinion. So, uh, they, so they, I mean, yeah, yeah sorry, go yeah, on. Go ahead. No, no, I'm I was just going to say like, you know, so... It, it, it was a real, you know, fucking eye opener. Like I just, you know, like the, the the web that was sort of coming together, and you know, people say, "Oh, paranoia, uh, blah blah blah." There's no esports, old boys network. This has been proven a million times. But like, it just was like everyone lined up to kick the shit out of the article, and they kicked the shit out of the article not by countering the points that I made, or or by coming out and answering what the community wanted. They lined up and kicked the shit out of the article by calling me tabloid, accusing me of killing esports, uh, you know, again, uh, and, and then you, you look at all the links they've got together, you know, like JP McDaniel um, used to be a fucking client of that esports management group. He's the guy who raises it on Live on 3, who then gloss over it in, in a real stilted fashion like not even doing the article any justice whatsoever in the discussion you know you see these connections and you think well what the fuck man like you know it's no wonder that nobody ever wants to write this stuff because these people will line up that they will try and take a shit on you man it's a, it's a shame like you know look i'm not trying to fucking martyr myself like i i don't care about like you know the community does a lot of bad things to itself like one of the key things it does is it always goes after the wrong fucking guys like, you know, guys and Destiny can identify with this, right? Like, Steve is a fucking, you know, a, a good person, man. Like, you know, might have made some bad judgments when it comes to certain photos or whatever. But, uh, you know, like, fuck it. Like, who, who ain't done dumb shit, right? Who ain't made mistakes like that? Other than that, he's a fucking top <laughs> boy. Like, I love him and totally fucking respect everything about him and his forthrightness. And we, we need more people in the scene like him. But do people fucking want people like him in the scene? No. We hound him out of the StarCraft 2 community, and then some fake saccharine prick who only smiles at you to get your money, we fucking, we make out like they're the saviors, and they ain't. And believe me, as soon as StarCraft 2 does take a terminal dip, and I don't think it's dead yet, not by a long chalk, I think there's life in the old dog, um, I just think it needs the right people to fucking resuscitate it, you know, they'll be fucking off to Hearthstone or whatever the next big thing is, and they won't be looking back. So don't fucking build these people up, man, because they only see you as little floating fucking dollar dude, signs. So wait, dissing Hearthstone, dude. Fuck you. No, I'm not dissing Hearthstone. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm illustrating a point that there's always going to be something bigger coming along. And isn't it weird yeah. how these people always seem to get their foot in the door just in case their, their true love of StarCraft yeah. doesn't fucking pan out? So what, what is your goal with this, Richard? Like, a lot, you know, I know you. A lot, others know you. Um, but there's a lot of folks in the community that don't really know your intentions, and you see all kinds of crazy comments, right, in in, in the Reddit threads, and even in your Cadred article or your comment section in Cadred. So, what is your goal for writing these articles? Like, well, what do you want to see? Do you, do you just want to pick at all these, you know, pick at all these companies and point out all their wrongdoings and or or mistakes and right. that sort of thing? 
or, or I, I know, I know, I know, because of the, what I do and the fact that I align myself to like shit mid-tier games like Call of Duty 4 and Counter-Strike Source because I was an FPS kid. I know nobody knows who I am, right? I, so I know probably 90% of this Twitch chat's like, who's this rambling bald fuck? Like, you know, and I get that, right? It's cool. Like, you know, I don't have a profile. But what I, so I, it's not about raising my profile. What it's about is I've been in esports a long time. People might not know that. I've been, been in esports for 10 fucking years. More if we, you know, count my initial discovery and then I had to take some time out because I did some real work, you know? Um... And, and in that time, it's always been the same. There's always people at the top, and basically, what what happens is the people that want that are, that are in the next tier down that want to get up to the top, they don't say anything because they think they're going to get invited to the table. And these guys run a big dupe on everyone down here, and they say if anyone fucks with us, we're just going to ban you. Like you, you can't CPL. You can't write if you write anything negative about CPL not paying out prize money, you can't come to CPL events. You know, and there's always someone trying to run a fucking monopoly with an iron fist. Um, and basically fucking over the community. Now, look, man, I ain't gonna lie. I, I took money. I fucking sold out in 2006 when I joined CGS. Uh, it's you know, it was a massive sellout. It was pretend all these games are the best. Pretend this business is the best. Don't write anything negative about anyone associated with it. And I was getting paid like 1,400 pounds like a month to write like eight shitty articles of like a thousand words. I've never seen money like that for such easy work, you know? And it, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it made me sell out and do things I'm really sad about now. Like, you know, I could mark the death of my journalistic integrity of fucking, you know, in my early 20s. So that, that's a shame that I did that. But after that came down and I got fucked over by it, I was like, well, I ain't gonna do that again. I'm never gonna be on the wrong side. And I just wanna tell the truth. I think that's the only way esports can actually grow. So the the point of the article is I you know T Toll Biscuit got one thing right in his diatribe at the end about maybe people are bored. I am bored. I'm bored of people at the top of esports exploiting the community. I'm bored of people making money, getting away with it. I'm bored of fucking habitual liars rising to the top. I'm fucking bored of that. Yeah, he's right. I'm absolutely. Yeah, so what, bored I mean, of so that. what do you want to accomplish with it? Do you want these people to change? I mean, because there's a question, and I've had this conversation with you. You want these people to leave? Or you want these people to no. change? What do you want these? What do you right. want the result of all this to be? Plan A is people realize there's going to be consequences, like not Reddit threads that they can get their little minions to downvote, or you know, not like you know, actual genuine consequences, like something that's written in stone, documented, so you know, perhaps future sponsors can see it and see that these guys didn't deliver a bunch of shit, so maybe they go with another company. I want consequences there, so people feel that they actually have to do what they say they're gonna do. It's the lack of consequence that, that enables them to feel so powerful and like they don't have to do anything that they promise. So that's what I want first and foremost, that there's at least a little bit of like, mm, we're gonna have to do this. And if that's there, I believe people will do this because no one wants to get fucked over and lose out on money and you know just because right when you know they could do a little bit more work and and actually keep the money and keep the respect of the community driving people out of the community i don't want to do that because ultimately i don't think that achieves a great deal but if these people are going to continually not deliver on promises then fuck it plan b has to be we collectively make them feel so unwelcome they fuck off and do something else because that's that's the next best thing and okay you know, that's... You know I, I don't feel bad about saying that steven what what do you think about this, man? I've never seen you so quiet, man, with uh, with this type of subject. I mean, it sucks because I, I mean, I agree with Richard for the most part, so I can't really say much else. <laughs> it's like having I'm brothers. Sure, I mean, show, I would never man. suggest. Sure you've got uh, I hate, one. Like I said, I hate the whole save esports bullshit. Like I don't do shit for esports, and I don't think anybody should. Um, it, it should should work on its own, you know. But um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it 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 kind of hurts that shit like this went down the way that it did. And I and I so distinctly remember, um, I remember Garfield like writing up that Team Liquid thread, and he was like in tears at the end of the whole, um, or you know, saying the N word incident. And he was like, "Please, please, we fired Orb. Can you please email our sponsors and tell them all that we got rid of him? Please, it would make all of us feel so much better." And it's like, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, see, this whole say I think it's just the word save, right? In esports, I mean, like like I said before, you're all about promoting esports and that sort of thing, though, right? It's Me? just yeah, it's just the sentiments of having to save save it is. No no no, I don't wrong. like anything having to do with anything for you. You just told me it's, it's something that I should work. Earlier, it should work like on its own. No no no, I just mean like it's something that it should work on its own. Like it's not a charity; it's a business. Everything is a business. 
as soon as the people if you want if you want to talk about doing things out of the goodness of your heart for other people then that's cool if they're volunteers but if you're getting like five like decent five figure salaries for doing shit in esports then then you don't need saving or you don't need a charity yeah, or you don't but need we're contributions talking about, I mean, or donations yeah. I was talking about in terms of the community and that sort of thing at the time. Oh, sure, yeah, whatever. When 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 there are people that make good money in the community asking for a charitable like views or whatnot, like that rubs me the wrong way. But... Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, any other last comments on uh, that wonderful article on the Cadets for Desert? Just well, fucking I'm change the topic, because... dude. Just change I'm... the topic. Well, no, I'm curious but because I mean, two, two, well, hold on, two GD and Total Biscuit are in the chat. Do they have anything to add? Well, uh, like, I don't know. Total Biscuit is always super honest and blunt. And uh, I, like, I'm a little sad that he took the side of the other people and didn't, like, didn't agree with Richard. But like, you, you can't just have all the same opinion, too, so it's fine for him to have his opinion. I'm just sad he didn't side with the side that I think he should have sided with. But uh, yeah, no, people, no, he made a lot of good comments in his sound club. Like, that's okay. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, but let's be, people make mistakes, but like sometimes it feels like admitting it is even worse for them, and they just want to sweep it under the rug and be like, "Community is toxic. Stop, stop killing these parts." And it's really all right, all right. silly. Okay, so so TV wants in. All right, so we'll pull TV in just for a okay. few minutes. All right, you guys ready? You guys okay with that? Richard, oh. Steven? Mark? Yeah, yeah, okay. of course. All right, give me one second while I... <coughs> I'm about to set up the screens. Let me just pull them on while I set it up. Hold on.